Hey guys, welcome to Windshine Audio. It has been a while since my last video. As you could imagine, we are really busy for the Dinafrips DAC firmware update project. In a good way, in a positive way, don't get me wrong. We have a team of people working on the firmware update project right now to support the customer requests. Should you have any issue, you may always drop us an email and my team will respond to you within 24 hours. 24 to 48 hours. I don't want to stress my team. They have been working very hard and I thank them for that. And I think the firmware update project is a pretty successful one. Ever since the release of the firmware update since March 2023, just in case you're watching this a year later, uh, it elevated the brand value it elevated the, the product's value, the used product value that is circulating on the market. And I think this positive wave uh, somehow has a positive effect to the Dina Fritz product and ourselves, where the sales volume go up a little bit. It is better than expected. So I thank you for your support. Today's video is not about releasing the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus firmware. We are going to delay the release of the Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus firmware. If you have been waiting for this, please, my apologize because we want to get it right for the first release in the near future. We plan to do it really soon. Mm, probably end of the month or early June in 2023, of course. Today's video is to talk about the firmware sound quality. We have been working with Dinafrips on this ever since we released the, term, the Pontus firmware. The Pontus firmware release was not a very successful one. Some of the customers think that the new firmware sounds a little bit too detailed, too much treble energy, it lost a little bit balance in the mid and the bass region. So the sound is tilted to brighter in a sense. Uh, this could be due to various reasons. The firmware is meant for, for meant for the 12th anniversary, the 12th anniversary Pontus deck. So if you have if you have updated the firmware for the older deck, the Pontus or the Pontus 2 or the non 12th anniversary version, the firmware working in the older deck may have a little bit mm, too much treble energy. Let's put it this way. So we have been working with Dinafrips on this to bring back the organic sound quality of the Pontus deck you have been missing. So several of our customers roll back the firmware to the original one and the magic is back. So that is the good news. You can always roll back the firmware to the one that is available on our website whenever needed to suit your taste, to suit the synergy of the system and to suit your ears whatever you want to put it. But we want to have a firmware that is bug fixed, having new feature, as well as sound good to most of the system on the market. So over the past so many weeks, we have been working with a firmware engineer, we have been working with the QAQC team, and we have been working with the tuning team of Dinafrips on this particular firmware, prioritizing the Pontus DAC. And the good news is we are ready to release this firmware to you. Uh, it's a little bit earlier than expected. We actually plan to release in June or July, but this firmware reached us a week ago and we have been testing this for several generations of the Pontus DAC. And I think Dinafips got it right this time round. So that is also the why the reason we are going to delay the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus firmware release because the same technique and the same strategy and the same coding method is going to apply to all the decks. So the Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus will have the same good bug fix firmware as well as the Nafrip sound quality in the near future. So instead of releasing it right now, we plan to delay it in the near future, sometime in June. So it wouldn't be too long, but we'll get it right at once. Right. So let me share with you some of the process that we do for this firmware update or firmware release. So what 
needs to be done before we release the firmware. There are four major steps. So the firmware engineer will need to code the firmware. Once the firmware is coded, it will be passed to a QC, QC team for measurement. So the first step is firmware engineer to code the firmware. And the second step is the, the QA, QC team will need to test the firmware using analyzer, the audio precision APX analyzer to measure the performance of this firmware loaded in different generation of the DAC. So it has to meet the Dynafrip standard before releasing to the tuning team. The tuning team tune the sound quality and advise the firmware engineer what to do. But once the firmware is coded, once the firmware pass the QA QC team um, measurement test, the tuning team is going to listen to this firmware in different generation of the deck and say that, all right, this firmware sounds good to their ears. It's not a single person, it's a team of people. A team of people will vote for this firmware, whether they like it or not. And once this pass the majority vote, and the firmware will be released for a production release. We call it a production release, where the firmware will be loaded to the deck that is going to ship to you. So if you order a new DAC from us, the deck comes with the latest firmware that passes these four major steps. And this particular firmware that we received receive a week ago passed the four tests, and we are going to release it to you today at, again, free of cost. So this particular firmware that we have been testing in different generation of the DAC, particularly the Pontus 2, Pontus and the Pontus 12, really does sound a little bit more weight in the mid, a little bit more weight in the base region, and the treble, in that sense, I wouldn't say the treble um, energy is reduced. I wouldn't say the details is reduced. But because of the more weights in the mids and the bass, the overall sound quality is neutral. So the Dynafrip Magic is back in this particular firmware release. The firmware release is going to upload it in the same firmware update tool link that is shared with you in the past. So just log in to the website using the password provided to you and download the latest firmware release dated today. And you're, you're going to enjoy this new sound quality and share with us what you think. And I'm going to apply the same firmware or we are going to apply the same firmware for the Aries, Aries 12, Venus 212 or the Venus deck in the so many generations before that and the Terminator deck. So the firmware release will be progressive and I hope this is a good news for you. All right. If you do not have the capability to update the firmware yourself, you can always purchase the DSP module from us. But because we will be releasing firmware quite often in a sense, it is always advisable to learn the firmware update method and master it so that as and when required, you can always flash the firmware to this DSP module. I forget one very important point. Over the process of the past few weeks, as we discussed with Dina Frips, we also added a new feature to the Dinafrips Pontus deck, at least for now, which is the dual AES EBU input now supports PCN384 as well as DSD128. It is double to the SPDIF input supported because now we have two dual AES EBU inputs, we can double the high resolution sampling rate. So if you use Dynafrips DDC, like the Hermes and the Gaia DDC, you may connect dual wire AES EBU from the Hermes or the Gaia DDC to the Pontus deck and enjoy high resolution PCM 384 kHz as well as DSD-128. DSD-128. That's a very big number megahertz that I cannot remember. All right, so new feature is added to the firmware for the Pontus and it is going to apply for the Venus and the Terminator as well as the Terminator 2 and Plus series. So I hope this is a good news to you as well. Okay, I think I have talked more or less all I want to talk today. If you find my channel interesting, if you find my content interesting, do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time. Peace.
拜。